Hey guys, it's Hink here. Uh, it's been a while since I posted, I apologize for that, but I've been insanely busy at work. Today I wanted to talk about uh, an interesting paper that I came across that I think everybody would find interesting. It's basically about how hand size correlates with penile size, or does it? And so the paper is, uh, is done, it's actually a Korean paper submitted in the Asian Journal of Andrology. This was done back in 2011. And it was basically, it looked at a cohort of Korean males and tried to determine what are the factors that actually correlate to, uh, to penile length. And so we'll basically just go through the paper today. I'll try to be pretty concise, but I do have the paper in front of me and I'll, I'll, post, a, uh, I'll post some important screenshots or screen captures up on the sides, but I, I certainly advise any of you to actually go and check out this paper yourself. And as I always say, you know, please you know, form your own conclusions, do your own research, but uh, hopefully I can be a guide and especially breaking down some of these sciencey terms, okay? And so basically in a nutshell, what they did in this paper is they looked at 144 Korean men that were on the urologic service in the hospital for whatever time, or for whatever reason during that time period, and they did what's called a prospective trial, meaning it wasn't a randomized control spot trial. They just got a group of men, consented them, and said, this is the question we're gonna to try to address, and then looked at the data in a prospective, meaning forward, day, uh, in a forward way, rather than a retrospective series is when you already have the data at hand, and let's say that these were guys who had surgery 10 years ago, and you go back and you analyze that old data that's, that's basically a difference. And so a prospective trial is much better than a retrospective trial, but the gold standard is always a randomized control trial where you actually, especially one that can be double blinded, but I'm getting into semantics here. And so um, basically jumping into what they concluded was that actually hand size does not correlate with actual penis size, but what does correlate is actually the ratio of your second to fourth digit on your right hand. So this is my right hand here. And so what they're saying is the second to the fourth digit ratio. And believe it or not, it was a negative correlation, meaning the smaller that uh, number, the smaller that ratio, the larger penises were found to be in this study. Keep in mind, this is one study. Please sound off in the comments section uh, in this because you know I'd love to know everybody's opinion on it. Uh, but, you know, clearly this is a flawed study, but it's very interesting data and at the very least it's thought provoking or as we say in the, in the business, it's hypothesis generating. And so uh, what we can see um, is that looking through, especially the, the introduction, there's actually a lot of very interesting topics that are covered. Let me try to adjust this. My glasses are fogging a little bit. And so basically what they talk about is how there is a relationship between androgen exposure in the basically in utero period, which particularly stems from about the ninth week into the time of birth and how that androgen exposure and your androgen sensitivity, how that actually affects the fetal penis and then how that can actually affect the, the adult penile size and penile length. And so they initially talk about uh, different studies that actually looked at correlating the mean um, testicle volume and how that can negatively correlate with the digit ratio. So that ratio, that digit ratio I'm talking about is the ratio between the second and the fourth. And basically when you have a negative correlation, it means that basically the smaller that number, the more, uh, the more prominent the finding is. So in this case, the smaller the ratio of your second to your fourth digit, excuse me, your second to your fourth digit, the uh, the larger the penises were found to be. And so they, they cite several papers that saw that, that foetal testogen, uh, testosterone, meaning that period, once again, starting at about nine weeks, that correlates directly um, with the actual digit, um, digit ratio that we're seeing. So not necessarily finger length, but actually the ratio between the two. So by ratio, just so we're clear, I mean, if you measure the second digit, uh, in this study they use centimeters, and then you measure your fourth digit, and then you divide the second digit over top of the fourth digit, what that number is, okay? And so they, had a, they cite some pretty promising data where they even got this hypothesis uh, from. And so basically they looked at 
prenatal testosterone exposure and how that can correlate with actual penis side, which that is a topic in itself that hopefully I'll dive into um, looking at the next, uh, the next topic when I get time. And so as far as materials and methods, these were men that were admitted into a single high level academic center. Um, and the men, 144 of them ranged between basically 20 years or older. They didn't really give an upper limit, which can lead to some confounding variables, which we'll discuss later. They measured the height, weight, finger um, length, and penile lengths were measured. Specifically, the second and the fourth digits of the right hand were measured. And they used this very, very intense caliper mechanism that actually could measure it up to the 100th of a millimeter, okay? They measured it twice and then they made sure that that coefficient of measurement was extremely accurate. So that reproducibility was about 0.97, which you know one would be a perfectly reproducible. So it's a very good study or a very good measure. The interesting thing is how they measured penile, penile lengths. So these were actually measured by an investigator that did not measure the digit length and actually measured them under anesthesia because they were going different, um, undergoing different neurological procedures. A key thing is that these procedures were not anything that could have potentially affected penile length. So we're talking about, they looked at people who were admitted for a kidney stone rather than people who were admitted for like prostate cancer, prostate cancer, or some sort of like Peyronie's disease, some sort of disease directly affecting the penis. And so they had a different investigator actually measure the actual bone pressed, um, bone pressed stretched flaccid length under anesthesia. And they did two measurements and they used their mean values um, in order to, to perform this paper. And so what they saw was that uh, one of the things they noticed was that actually height was a significant predictor for flaccid penile length, meaning the taller you are, the larger your flaccid penis. And that was found on the multivariate analysis. And so we're not going to get into the weeds on multivariate versus univariate, but a univariate analysis is only looking at one factor and how outcomes are affected, whereas a multivariate analysis looks at multiple different uh, variables and how they all correlate. And the multivariate gives you much more, uh, much better data because univariate um, data can be can be misleading. And so. Of course, they found that height correlates to flaccid penile length, not stretched length, just how big is your junk in the flaccid state. And the only, uh, the only thing they found as far as hand correlation is not the length of the fingers, but once again, that digit ratio, meaning the size of the, the second digit compared to the fourth digit and what that number is. The lower that number, the higher the stretched flaccid length, okay? And so, they also found that um, the, actually the size of your flaccid negatively correlated with your stretch flaccid length. And so what I mean by that is basically the smaller your penis, the more elasticity they hypothesized. And so you actually had a larger stretch length was, was seen with patients with smaller flaccid, whereas the people that had larger flaccids actually had less um, enlargement of uh, when you had that stretched uh, measurement. And so now we're kind of going into the discussion here, but they talk a lot about how gestation and the relationship between testosterone and what that has to do with anything um, and how that can correlate with male genitalia. Um, and so they talk about different studies that actually correlate uh, the effects of estrogen and testosterone into the, uh, the low digit ratio and how that can correlate with prenatal um, testicular activity and androgen exposure. And, uh, you know, it's sometimes they get pretty far into the weeds and talk about different genes that are associated with these factors, uh, but it's still pretty interesting data. They actually start to bring up some ethnic differences and, you know, Here's what I'll ask y'all to chill in the comments a little bit, just because uh, sometimes people OD, especially when race comes in um, to, to mind. But what they found is that actually there were significant differences in that, dif digit, in that digit ratio on the published data based on your ethnicity with uh, the, um, the highest digit ratio actually found um, in some of the more um, East Asian countries, whereas in the, the lowest digit ratio was found in a lot of like the Afro-Caribbean, like Jamaican um, uh, 
population. And so in that situation, there's a difference in the digit ratio. However, when you're talking about actual erase and penis size, in the data that they analyzed, there was no direct correlation. And so uh, they did note that East Asians, this is quoting here from the study, East Asians have slightly shorter stretched penile length when compared to other ethnic groups, such as Caucasian or African Americans, okay? Um, they also point out some pretty interesting data that, can, that says that the penile size at birth may be associated with actually your penis size after puberty. So meaning if you're born well endowed or higher endowed, the chances of you being more well endowed later in life is pretty interesting. And there was a paper that they bring up out of Bulgaria that actually analyzed that. And so um, there, they also talked about some studies looking at the correlation between height and penile length. And basically what they found was that, yes, there is a correlation between height and your actual like flaccid penile length, but that's it. It's not like the taller you are, you necessarily have a longer stretched flaccid length, at least in this paper that we're talking about here, okay? Um, they also make a point to note that there is no correlation between the size of your hands and actual penis size. And so don't assume just because some guy has massive hands like Kawhi Leonard that he's walking around with some enormous dong. I mean, you know, that dude's like, what, 6'9"? I mean, he probably is, but, you know, that's neither here nor there. It doesn't correlate with actually the size of his hands unless his second to fourth digit ratio is, is very, very small. Um, so... Um, finger, they conclude that, um, this means that it is not finger length, but digit ratio that can predict adult penile length. Okay. And so, um, here they talk about how the elasticity of a small flaccid penis, um, may be higher than that of a large flaccid penis. And that this was actually studied in a paper and that they actually correlated that. Um, and, um, they saw similar findings here. They also made a point to bring up that actually the right hand is actually more sensitive to the left hand. And most of the data looking at how te fetal testosterone can affect um, adult peanut, uh, excuse me, uh, the digit ratio is done measuring the right hand. And they actually cite a paper that says why, it, you know, it can explain why the right hand might be more influenced. To me, that sounds a little shaky, but hey, uh, the data... <laughs> Technically, data is plural, so the data are what the data are, okay? I know that sounds weird as hell to say, uh, but in residency, they kind of made a big deal about that. Anyways, um, there are actually some studies that show that if you have a low digit ratio, that you could be, um, that you have a higher pain tolerance, uh, which was pretty interesting. And so they wanted to make a point that, no, this is not because if you had a lower pain tolerance, you could actually stretch the penis more. Um, these were an unconscious patients that were in it under anesthesia. So it is important to note that. They also note that there was no relationship between age and penile length because as you age, the elasticity of your penis does decrease. And so your ability to stretch it actually decreases. And so, uh, but there was no correlation there. So even though they had a wide range of age groups, that did not um, influence the, the data necessarily. And so um, basically they just conclude that it's really that digit ratio that makes um, the biggest difference as far as um, it measured penile length in this one prospective study based in a Korean population. So that's the paper in a nutshell, okay? Um, one of the things that they actually concluded is that there is actually a, an equation that you can use um, to actually calculate, <coughs> excuse me, your stretched, uh, calculate your predicted stretched flaccid length, basically. A very important thing to know is that if you actually look at the characteristics of the population, the mean flaccid penile length was 7.7 .7 centimeters, okay? 7.7 .7 centimeters is approximately three inches, okay? And then the mean penile stretched length was 11.7 centimeters, which is about 4.5 inches, okay? I don't know if I mentioned it in here, but they do mention that there's several published papers that actually show that the stretched flaccid length does in fact directly correlate with your erect length. It might not be a one-to-one, -one, but the longer your stretched flaccid length, the longer your erect penis. And so that has been verified, and I'm gonna make another post about that because people always say, 
oh, well, you know, you can't, just because your flaccid length is increasing, it doesn't necessarily mean your erect length is increasing. Well, actually it does. That's what the data overwhelmingly supports. Um, that being said, I digress, okay? And so, but we're talking about a mean stretched flaccid length of 4.5 centimeters, which, um, you know, depending on where you look at the actual standard deviations for average, it's probably towards the lower end of average, but, you know, typically we say average erect length is more like around, you know, five, five and a half inches. Um, so just keep some of these numbers with a grain of salt. The reason why I'm saying that is because on this equation, there is actually um, not, uh, they, they make their equation based off of those numbers. And so I brought my handy dandy little ruler here, which is clearly not a very accurate caliper, but I was gonna demonstrate basically the findings of the study. And so I have my ruler here, as you can see, it has um, a unit of measurement in centimeters right here. And so um, to start, I will measure my second digit. And so this is not gonna be accurate, but uh, you know what, screw it. I'll just try to measure it with my left hand. Um, and so when I measure my second digit on my right hand, that number is right at 7.1234. So second digit, 7.4 centimeters. When I go to my fourth digit, okay, fourth digit is right at So fourth digit is right at 7. Point, right at 7.45, 7.4. Um, let's just call it 7.4, okay? So my digit ratio is one, okay? Arguably, actually, my ring finger is a little bit bigger than my pointer finger, but I'll be honest, I don't have very big hands, even though hand size doesn't correlate, whatever. And so that means that my ratio is one, okay? And in this, um, they predict this equation so they do it in a really goofy way, but they say that negative 9.2 times your digit ratio, which is one, which would equal 9.2, um, and then plus 20.577, and I'll include a little excerpt so you guys see what the equation is, okay? Um, and so 20.57, say minus 9.2, come on math, don't fail me now. And so we got seven here. Okay, and so we got, so we got 20 minus nine. So this ends up being 11.37. Hopefully that math is right and I didn't just prove how much of an idiot I am with basic math. Um, and of course I'm recording with my iPhone, so I can't just plug it in my calculator. But anyways, so 11.37 is my predicted stretched, um, penile length. Once again, 11.37 is about 4.5, um, inches. Okay. Uh, it's actually just under that. It's more like maybe like 4.4, 4.3. My stretch flaccid length is significantly more than that. And so please don't, you know, use this equation and try to form any conclusions from it. But it's just very interesting, very thought provoking data that uh, basically gets rid of the old trope that uh, that your hand size or shoe size or any of that stuff correlates with actual penis length. And it actually doesn't. And they talked about how uh, many of these factors that were thought to be associated with penile length just don't pan out. So to summarize uh, what we talked about, your second to, fourth, second to fourth length digit ratio, okay? Second to fourth, you calculate, you measure both and then divide the second by the fourth and you get that number. The lower that number is, the larger they found the penis is to be on this one study when we're talking about stretched flaccid length. They found that basically growers, so the smaller your flaccid length, the larger the uh, basically stretched flaccid length was, so indicating more, more elasticity. And so just because you're a grower, you have a small flaccid, doesn't mean you're gonna be smaller than anybody else. It just means you have more impressive growth. Um, shout out to the grower gang. Um, 
And um, really that was, that were the big takeaways from the study. So um, they attributed those changes to difference in the testosterone. And so one thing that we'll have to explore a little bit later is, you know, what are the studies that correlate that fetal testosterone to actual um, pita size? So uh, anyways, guys, I strongly advise you to, to find this paper and read it yourself. I'll try to include a link um, in this video. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed this. Uh, please like and subscribe. I look forward to doing some more videos like this in the future. You know, do your own research, form your own conclusion, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.